the Danny Ford Orange Bowl show, highlighting Clemson Tiger play in the 1982 Orange Bowl with coach Danny Ford and Jim Phillips, the voice of the Tigers. The Danny Ford Orange Bowl show is brought to you by the Federal Land Bank and Production Credit Association. We speak your language. By Carolina Pride, the name to look for in quality meats. By Southern Bank, working harder for your money. And by Spartan Food Systems, owners and operators of Hardee's and Quincy's, with locations throughout the Southeast. Danny, all I can say is Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Coach of the Year, and Happy Coach of the National Champion Tigers. Well, Jim, I hope all that's true about uh, the National Championship thing. We're very, very proud of Clemson University first, of course, because they did a super, super job uh, and allowed us to be there and, and, and sticking with us through last year when a lot of people, I think, were saying, well, you know, they could win six and five and question some of our decisions, question some of our kids. Uh, and I think it's just, you know, it's just great to go back and see our bunch here come back and perform like that. They did tonight. They, they, they won 12 football games, and I don't think anybody in the history of Clemson's ever done that. I don't uh -huh. think anybody has won probably a national champion at Clemson, and I think they'll probably win that now because I think they answered a lot of questions about the Big 8 and the uh, ACC tonight. We're real proud of ACC and proud of all the mothers and fathers of our players, and I know they're very, very proud of them. And, and our fan, boy, was it our fan. The day I do, uh, did they turn the day out? I do uh, they turn Nebraska out? tonight, I heard a lot about the Big Red and Nebraska fans, but the, our big orange people were very, very happy. And I know a lot of people took a lot of chances trying to make some money on putting the national <laughs> champion things <laughs> out and all that, and some Coca-Cola folks put some out too on some schedules. But we, we, you know, I'm glad they did. I'm glad they stood behind uh, behind our young people and had, had a lot of uh, pride in them and, and took a lot. I know everybody in South Carolina is happy, whether they're a uh, Clemson man or South Carolina man, because it brings a lot of great honor to our state. And, and again, it helps the ACC conference. Uh, but uh, our assistant coaches, I don't think that uh, anybody in the world has got a group of, of men who are so dedicated as we have. And, and uh, the only thing I want to do, I want to keep them all. I don't want nobody coming in there bugging them and trying to get them. And, that means paying them a whole lot better. We're going to pay them a whole lot better. They better get the bank rolling. <laughs> Danny, I, I think that the preparation for this game, you gave the kids the long break, and uh, then you came back with uh, two very concentrated weeks of practice, very low-key about everything, but I think you knew right off the top when you got the New Smyrna that the things were working out pretty well. Well, I tell you, Dan, we had the best practice we've ever had at New Smyrna Beach, and I was afraid we lost it a little bit when we came to Miami. We traveled on Christmas Day, and when we, when we traveled, the next day, uh, after on the 26th, we had a poor practice, and I think we had to get reorganized everything in Miami, get used to Miami, which is uh, 10 degrees hotter than down here. But I think the best thing we did, our seniors advised us to uh, go and just get used to the heat, and a very, very good planning on their part. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do right now. We're going to sit back and relax a little bit and talk about this, uh, look a little bit at this first half of play in the Orange Bowl on Friday night, New Year's night, 1982. It'll never be forgotten if you're a Clemson fan. It was a hot and humid night in Miami, and Donald Igwe Buique's kickoff, a line drive that was picked up by Fryer, who returned it out to the 25-yard line, and it was from that point that Nebraska would take over. The pitch was to Roger Craig, got six yards, as he raced out to the 31-yard line. And it was second down, and Bates, the fullback, took it up the middle for two more. And then that Clemson defense that you've seen so much of all year came into play. Boom, fumble. And there is William Devane jumping on it. The Tigers have taken the ball away from Nebraska at the 28-yard line. That's a happy William Devane. First play from scrimmage for Clemson in the game. Homer Jordan doing something he didn't do often this year. He went to his tight end, Bubba Diggs. It was a four-yard pickup. Carried into the 25 of Nebraska. And then Cliff Austin found the seam to the outside left and gained eight yards. Down to the 17. However, three plays later, Homer Jordan, who was rolling to his left, slipped down on the turf. And that brought on Donald Igwe Buike for a 41-yard field goal, and Donald knocked it through the net. So the Tigers were up 3-0 over Nebraska. And the happy Tiger fans were going crazy in Miami for a reason. And here they there. Thompson kicking off again. This time, Igwe Buike's boot carries to the goal line where Mike Rozier uh, an extremely tough return man. Carried it out to the Nebraska 31-yard line from where 
Hosier took off over the right side for seven yards. A squirming, fighting runner. A good one. Struck fear into you every time he picked up the ball. And he carried to the 40-yard line, but good congestion in the middle of the Tiger defense. However, Hosier was able to get over the top on the left side for a first down. Watch this play by Jeff Davis. Bang, Rozier down. That was on a first and 10 for a gain of only one. Then Maurer passed to Brown. The Clemson 43 in a 15-yard gain. With the help of two Clemson offsides and a three-yard run by Rozier and four by Bates, Nebraska had a first and five at the Tiger 25. Maurer pitched back to Rozier. And he hit Anthony Steele for the touchdown, and Nebraska had moved out on top. Uh, Siebel hit the extra point, and it was the Cornhusker seven, the Tigers three. Now two possessions later is where we'll pick up the action. Thompson's ball, second and 10 at the Nebraska 26-yard line. Homer on a keep, brings it up and gets four yards. All now at the 26. Homer hit for no gain. Pulling around to the right side, has to pull it back in, and Nebraska's defense was equal to the toss. So, once again, Donald Igwe Buike coming on. And we'll see the results of this one as he hits it through once again. And now it's a seven to six ball game. That was the scoring for the first quarter. In the second quarter, after Nebraska failed to move, Clemson took over and moved from Tiger 24 and to the Clemson 46. And Homer Jordan dropping back the throw. Hank Magwood. Running for the ball, couldn't get to it, but it was tipped, and he picked it up for a 44-yard gain, and the Tigers were in business. Yeah, Frank get him. Homer Jordan keeping this time. There's a delayed draw there. Picked up two yards to the 10. Then Perry Tuttle on the receiving end, but no, intercepted in the end zone. Tigers thought they had it. Tuttle thought he had it. Thought he was stripped of the ball after the touchdown. It didn't turn out to be that way. As you see, Nebraska gets the ball. All right, Nebraska once again. Bates on a fumble. Jeff Davis on the recovery. And it's Tiger ball at the 27-yard line. So that defense comes through once again. And you'll see the move into the split backfield here as Homer Jordan drops back to pass and finds Perry Tuttle on the out. And Tuttle with a good move around the right side carries into the 20-yard line. Second down and three for the Tigers. Good hard run by Cliff Austin. Picks up five yards. Made it first and ten. Kevin Mack hitting over the left side. Again, that strong surge at the line of scrimmage behind. Good blocking. Back then, almost losing the ball, but he did recover at the nine-yard line. So the Tigers in business, third down and four. Homer Jordan, quarterback draw, carries into the five-yard line. Kevin Mack then took it to the two, and then watch out as Cliff Austin is ready to skirt around the right end for the touchdown that gives the Tigers the lead, but they never were to relinquish. I would decide to go for two points. The pass went incomplete, and it was 12-7 at the half. Clemson on top in the game. I look now at that play where they tried to go for two. Homer was under a lot of duress here. The Nebraska team had a good rush on him. And as a result, this pass went incomplete from that good. Just a little underthrown. Danny, you went in at halftime with a 12-7 lead over Nebraska, and uh, you had missed on the two-point try uh, after the touchdown. Uh, your strategy didn't seem to change any. Uh, maybe you ran the ball a little more up the middle than you had in the first half of play. You didn't try to go wide so much. Well, I think uh, we felt like uh, before the game, we didn't know how we were going to be able to block them up front because they're very, very strong and very, very mobile. Uh, the thing we did... At halftime, we had a lot more confidence in, in our game plan. Of course, we played when we were ahead 12-7, uh, to 7, but we wanted to uh, play them very, very tight, Jim, early in the game and, and uh, try to stay even or just a little bit behind. I hate to say that, but we didn't want to get uh, behind a bunch in a hurry where we had to get out of our game plan because we knew we had a good one. Our coaches worked too hard on it for it not to be a good game plan. And then we knew that, uh, <clears throat> that with uh, the heat 
that we felt like in the fourth quarter that fatigue would hurt them a whole lot more than it would hurt us. And we, we felt like if we could stay close, put a little pressure on them in the third quarter, and really stay close, and they, they may start panicking or start pushing themselves a little bit because they, I don't think they were planning on being close in the third quarter. I think they, was, they, they had enough confidence in their young people that they thought they were going to blow us out there in the first two periods. So when we did that in the second half, you could, you could see their guys wilting a little bit. We felt like in the fourth quarter that we could out uh, condition them probably and uh, out hustle them because I knew we could out hustle them. We, we knew we could out quick them. That's two things we knew we could do. Mm -hmm. So we've done it against everybody all year. And when they uh, we came in and, and uh, were ahead 12-7, to 7, we, our, our guys were excited and, and they felt like, you know, hey, uh, we, we can play with them. We know we can beat them. We got 30 minutes and it'll be a lifetime dream for every one of us in Clemson University and the ACC and everybody else. And uh, it was just super. I, I couldn't ask our pl players, you know, or our coaches to do any better job than they, they uh, did tonight. Uh, really, you can't say, or, you know, I don't believe the, the president of the school or the trustees have got the vocabulary to explain what this means to Clemson, much less me as a coach. Uh, it's just a tremendous feeling for uh, our young people who believed in themselves and their coaches. Well, Danny, the thing that I noticed in the third quarter, you faced adversity and yet overcame it. Uh, you were set back by a couple of holding penalties early. Yeah. Uh, you got down with the first and goal inside the five, and bingo, you were set back again on a, on a sack. And then turn right around on a big third down pass play, and Perry whipped the defender so terribly bad, and Homer laid it out there, and it was six all the way from the time he left his hands. Right. Well, we, you know, there's no no question that uh, we wanted to come out with three points, and when we came out with three points, uh, uh, and got we felt like we were going to come out with three with the field goal, and we got it lost. I said, Oh Lord, we, you know, we're getting bad mm -hmm. position now. Let's go, and then the coaches call a pass. And I told them before the game, I ain't going to bother. <laughs> they call it their football game, and, and they call the pass. I like to thank you because I thought it was going to be an interception. And then all of a sudden, tell them like a seven point grab there, and uh, the coach asked me, Would you take seven to three? And I said, sure, anytime. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at that second half now. It was a thriller in Miami as the Tigers and Nebraska went at it. and the second half of the Orange Bowl, 1982. Neither the Tigers nor the Cornhuskers could score in their first possessions, but Clemson was ready the second time. Campbell punting Billy Davis on the receiving end, brings it out to the 26-yard line from where the Tigers take over, first and 10. Homer Jordan, named most valuable offensive player of the game, rolled into his left, looking for Tuttle once again. Boy, he got around the corner just in time. That's a 12-yard pickup. And it makes the first and ten again at the Tiger 38-yard line. And you see Chuck McSwain on the carry here. A penalty on this play as the Tigers were ruled in motion. But Nebraska turned it down to make it a second and nine situation. Homer on the pitch here missed Chuck McSwain. And the ball, fortunately for the Tigers, rolled their way and went out of bounds. So they were able to keep the drive alive. Then... Homer back again, and this time finds Tuttle, who makes a fine outside cut. Gets down the sidelines, and the Tigers are in business at the Nebraska 41 for the first and 10. Jeff McCall missed the last two games of the regular season off the right side for five yards. McCall running hard in there again now. You'll see him spin his way forward as he picks up four more valuable yards for the Tigers to keep this drive and the momentum going. And for a second time in the evening, Homer going to his tight end, Bubba Big, the pickup of seven yards, bringing about a second and three at the Nebraska 25. Chuck McSwain hitting over the right side, big hole there by the offensive line. Nine yards right up the middle. And to show you how well that line blocks, look at this. Jeff McCall once again fighting at the end of that surge in there for 11 yards. First and goal now, Tigers, at the Nebraska 5. Jeff McSwain will get the call once again. Homer Jordan gives to him, slips outside that tackle, and gets it in near the three-yard line. However, on the next play, it looked as though adversity might well overcome the Tigers' drive. And good in motion. McSwain outside, pressure on him. Slips a little bit, can't get away, and is knocked down back at the 13-yard line, where it was now third down and goal. Not the best position to be in until you watch what Homer does right here and let's let the picture describe it all. And 
Tuttle with a record eight touchdown catches in a year by Terry Tuttle with Bob Pauling kicked the extra point. The Tigers were on top 19 to 7 over at the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. Still in that third quarter, Nebraska couldn't move and kick. And you will see the finest return of the year by Billy Davis, the one we've all been waiting on. Slips outside. The wall is set. And Davis racing 42 yards all the way down to the Nebraska 22 yard line. And once again, the Tigers found themselves in business. Jeff Lostin hits over the right side to the 19 yard line, a pickup of three, making it second and seven. Then, however, Cliff met by a Nebraska defender. There's a penalty on the play, holding against the Tigers, and that set them back even deeper. Then Homer went back and found Jerry Gilliard over the middle. And Gilliard carrying it into the 16-yard line where it was a third and three situation. But a loss of four on this play. As Homer, rolling to his left, is pinned in and pulled down by the Nebraska defense. McDonald Igwe Buike on this night that he'll never forget. Once more, a foul to farm. But boot one through, and he does. And the Tigers take the lead over the Cornhuskers, 22 to 7. And there was pandemonium in the Orange Bowl as the Tiger fans realized that a national championship was within grasp. To pick up the action now in the fourth quarter, Nebraska on their second and final scoring drive of the night. Mike Rozier. Nice slow motion shot as he takes it to the Clemson 26 yard line for a first down. And then, Craig finding the scene, getting outside. Great quickness down the sideline, and suddenly he's in the end zone, and it looks as if the momentum might shift in the game. Especially when Nebraska decided they would go for two, and they were penalized back out to the eight. It didn't make Tom Osborne happy. But nonetheless, they stuck with their play, and you'll see Craig on almost a duplicate of his touchdown run scamper up the left side, in for the two-point conversion. The Tigers held a 22 to 15 lead. Later, Tigers forced Nebraska to punt. Ellis Hall hit Roger Craig for a 13-yard loss. And here comes the play that finally sealed the national championship for the Tigers. Homer Jordan doing what he's done best all year, coming up with a big play, scrambles for 23 yards in the first down. The Tigers were able to run the clock down to six seconds, and Nebraska could do nothing but with a national championship win. They've been super all year again. I can't brag on too much, Jim, but uh, they felt like to come in the football game that if we could score over 14 points, we'd win the football game. And, and, and you know, I can say that now, but if I'd said before the game, we got blown out. That's hard to prove, but we proved that, and, and they felt like that uh, four, over 14 points would win it for Clemson. And uh, I really was very surprised with the way, uh, that uh, I felt like, and I, I had a bad thought there. Where I was thinking, if, if we could have played a long time, they were just going to get seven points. And then by that time, we missed two tackles, and they were going to score. But uh, our, fo our coaches were ex ex extremely right. Uh, they uh, uh, just gave up 14, 15 points there, 14 points, I guess. I don't even know the score now. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is now. <laughs> but uh, they did a super job, and uh, our coaches felt like they really did. They four over 14 points to win it for Clemson. Well, it certainly did. And Danny, the kicking game, we haven't mentioned that, but it was outstanding. I don't know what Hatcher, of course, what he uh, averaged, but I, I bet it's over 40. He's going to get the ball, ball extremely well. Our coverage was super. Uh, our kickoff coverage could have been just a little bit better, but they were they lead the country, and they averaged 32 yards per, per, per uh, return. Uh, we didn't, they didn't break a long one. That's all we cared about. They tried to reverse on us, and we were alert for that. Um, Donald comes in and kicks uh, three field goals, I believe, mm -hmm. and then uh, Pauling kicks this extra point, and we kick off well, uh, and our protection's great, and uh, I think I don't think that uh, I'm still looking for that perfect game for the playoffs, <laughs> but I, we don't have a chance to prove it anymore. But we played awful hard, and I'm very, very proud uh, of our football players uh, for playing so hard, and giving the great effort that they gave tonight. Number one in the nation. It's, it's got to be there. Uh, by now, it's already been known, but uh, we're, of course, uh, showing this on Sunday, Danny. Um, even though there was talk uh, out of the weight room, perhaps, uh, hey, look, let's go 11-0 and play Nebraska in the Orange Bowl. Uh, uh, we knew that the team throughout the course of the entire year had geared itself to having this great season. Deep down inside, did you believe it could really become all of this? Uh, I don't... I'd be telling stories. I didn't say you look at look at the schedule and say we got to win this, we got to win this. But uh, 
a big game. Uh, the whole year I thought with two lane games until Villanova dropped the schedule because I didn't know how we'd start off early. Uh, but uh, we, we, our schedule worked out perfect for us. Uh, I felt like we could be a winning football team to go to a bowl game. Uh, to go to a major game, bowl, and, and go undefeated, I'd have to be telling a story if I thought I'd say that because it's too hard week in and week out to win uh, one single football game. But uh, thank goodness and thank good Lord for these people we have here at Clemson. Did it ever cross your mind a year you spent at Alabama as an assistant coach, went 11 and 0, faced Nebraska for the national championship, and lost? Well, no, and I never thought, uh, <laughs> you know, I never thought I'd be back at Clemson. To tell you the truth, we played Clemson when I was in school, and I never thought I'd be there in North Virginia Tech when, when, when we, we played up there. But uh, yeah, I just want to, you know, thank the people at Clemson for putting up with us and our staff uh, through last year and, and uh, giving us a chance to prove that we we're pretty good folks. I think I think we ought to. Try and get something going here. I think Clemson ought to have a day to allow its fans to come out and honor this group of young men. Well, I'd be very, very surprised if if, if the people did not recognize this team has been uh, probably the greatest football team that's ever been at Clemson. Danny, all I can say is congratulations. And I've been telling you all here to keep that smile up. And the only thing I can say now is we'll see you next September, folks. And you'll be smiling then, too. <laughs> The Danny Ford Orange Bowl Show, highlighting Clemson Tiger play in the 1982 Orange Bowl with Coach Danny Ford and the voice of the Tigers, Jim Phillips. The Danny Ford Orange Bowl Show has been brought to you by the Federal Land Bank and Production Credit Association. We speak your language. By Carolina Prime, the name to look for in quality meats. By Southern Bank, working harder for your money. And by Spartan Food Systems, owners and operators of Hardee's and Quincy's with locations throughout the Southeast.